Do you like to play music but don't own a radio? Why not invest in some random electronics in the speaker today? Call 1-800-ARDUIN-YES for your free trial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an Arduino to play music. If you want to skip any parts of this video, go ahead, I understand. Some people like to skip videos, some people actually like Taylor Swift's music, and some people do give drugs to babies, so it is what it is. First, some theory. Sound is defined as a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave through a transmission medium such as a gas, liquid, or solid. What does all that mean? I have no clue. But to simplify it, sound is vibration. The vibration consists of alternating waves of pressure, which, upon hitting your eardrums, is converted into electrical signals and sent to your brain, where it gets interpreted as sound. If you were to plug a microphone into a scope that measures waves, commonly known as an oscilloscope, and talk into the microphone, you'd see something like this. You can think of it as a representation of the waves, or vibration, of the sound the microphone sees, converted into alternating electrical current, or AC. If you take this AC current and run it through a speaker, the speaker will turn the electrical signal back into alternating sound waves, allowing you to hear the sound with your ears. The shape of these waves, as seen on an oscilloscope, is usually in the form of what's called a sine wave, due to the smooth oscillations between peaks. A musical note is made by vibrating the air, for example by playing an instrument at a fixed frequency. When I play this note, the string vibrates 440 times per second, or at 440 hertz, making the note A4. We can use the pulsed width modulation, or PWM function of an Arduino, set at about 50% duty, and run it through a speaker to recreate this effect. PWM basically turns a circuit on and off at a set pace, or frequency. This frequency is different depending on the model of Arduino. This is called a square wave, as opposed to a sine wave, because of the sudden and instantaneous transitions between peaks. Again, I have no idea what that means, I just read stuff on the internet. Part 2 is setting up the hardware. First, let's unbox these electronic things I ordered off of Amazon. I got an Arduino Nano, only because it was cheap. The disadvantage is that I'm limited to how complex of songs I can play. These instructions will still work for the pricier boards, with some modification, but now it's time to bust out the soldering iron. Since I don't really want to breathe in all the flux from the solder, it's time to also bust out my homemade fume collector, made from an old frozen food box, charcoal fish tank filter, 5 volt computer fan, and a random USB cable I found, all hot glued together. Now I'll hook up the Arduino to my computer to copy code onto it. Then let's hook up my bench power supply, which is just an old PC power supply from the 90s hot glued to an old Mandarin orange box. I'll attach this yellow wire, which is 12 volt out, to the positive side of the Arduino, and black to ground. Positive is the pin labeled VIN, or voltage in, on most Arduino boards, and ground is any pin labeled G and D. Let's plug it in and give it a test. Ugh, remember, if you misuse electricity, it can seriously hurt or kill you, so don't mess with it. But since you're probably not going to listen to my warning, make sure you know what you're doing. Take some courses, talk to some experts, don't stick anything in outlets. This cardboard box was a bad choice for a mounting surface, due to the flammability of cardboard. My intentional arc could have lit it on fire, which would have been very bad. Don't do that one at home. Most electronic solder contains lead, so it's important you wash your hands after handling. The power supply pins can usually take anywhere from 7 to 12 volts supply voltage, but since you don't actually need an external power supply to power your board, from now on I'm just going to use the onboard USB connector for power. You don't need to attach a button to make this project work, but I found it nice for reasons I'll show you later on. To set it up, let's take this momentary switch, some wires, and around a 10 kilo ohm resistor to use as a pull down resistor. Here's the wiring diagram. The black wire is attached to one side of the switch. The 10K resistor and signal wire, here in yellow, are both hooked up to the other side. The yellow wire is then attached to pin D2 on the Arduino and black to ground. The red wire goes from the other side of the resistor to plus 5 volts. The way this works is when the switch is not being pressed, or open circuit, pin D2, our signal wire, sees positive voltage from the red wire through the resistor. 
When you press the switch or close the circuit, the yellow wire is then shorted to ground or zero volts. If we didn't use a pull up or down resistor, the signal pin would be floating at an unspecified voltage and the board would get confused, just like me when I try to understand math. And the high resistance is necessary because you never want to short plus five volts to ground. Now for the output pins, or the ones that go to our speaker. Which pins, and how many you can use, depends on what model of Arduino you have. For example, the Nano and Uno both have three internal timers, so I can use three pins for music output. Whereas the Mega boards should be able to use six pins for more complex music. As for which pins you can use, you can use any of the digital pins, denoted by D and a number, but for now, let's just stick with D10, D11, and D12. Let's put resistors into each of the slots and solder them together, attached to a speaker wire. According to the documentation, you can use basically any value of resistor, but I found the 100 ohm ones work fine, mostly because I had them sitting around. If you feel spicy, don't use resistors at all and see what you can blow up. The speaker wire now goes to the speaker and another wire back to ground on our board. Part three, the programming. These instructions are for Windows 10. If you have a Linux machine, you probably don't need my help, but the steps are similar. And if you have a Mac, sell it and buy a PC, don't at me. If you don't have the Arduino IDE installed, go install it and run some test code. There are plenty of tutorials online, so I don't really feel like I need to make another one. To test sound output, let's first create a new sketch. At the very top, I'll put int speaker underscore pin equals 10. This is just to tell our program where the speaker is. Next, inside the setup function, let's put pin mode and in parentheses write speaker underscore pin comma output, which tells the Arduino that we want to output a signal on that pin. Then inside the loop function, we can use analog write on our speaker pin set at 50% duty or integer value of 127. If we save sketch and upload, our Arduino will start making this noise. And the only way to stop it is to unplug the USB connector. This is no good, so let's add the buttons functionality. I'm going to add two new variables called button underscore pin and button underscore state. Button pin will be set to the pin we have our bottom on, in this case pin two, and button state will be set to zero. Then to initialize pin two as input, we just add one line to setup, as you see on screen. Inside our main looping function, let's add button state equals digital read button pin. To read what state the button is in, pressed or unpressed, which is different from unimpressed. If button state is equal to the value low, our button is pressed, so let's output on our speaker pin, and vice versa. Finally, let's add a small delay so we aren't constantly checking our button state. And now we test. Hooray! Hooray! The frequency or rate of vibration can be checked with this code I found online. After modifying our code slightly, the speaker outputs this tone. Now we just need a list of tones and what frequency corresponds to each note. Thankfully, we don't have to manually input each note we want to play. Using Playtune, it's easy to play tunes on an Arduino. Create a folder called Playtune in your Arduino's library folder, found within the directory where you install the IDE. For example, on my computer, the library is at C drive, program files, x86, Arduino. Download the zip file, linked in the description, and copy the files playtune.cpp and playtune.h to your newly created folder. Now we can simply take the example code found in our zip folder and copy into a brand new sketch. After uploading, the Arduino will start playing the example song, which is cool and all, but again, the only way to make it stop is to unplug the Arduino. Now let's copy our code we wrote earlier to initialize the button, and in our main loop, let's add an if statement to check if the button is pressed. Once again, if button state equals low, start playing, and it will automatically stop when it reaches the end, or if you unplug the board. Part four, adding your own MIDI files. When you feel ready to add your own music, download MIDI tones from the link in the description. Once that's downloaded, extract to a location you can easily find later. I found it helpful to extract directly to C drive program files and into a folder named MIDI Tones Master. Next, put any MIDI files you want to convert into your local user path, in my case, C drive users JRE98. Open up command prompt and type in path C drive program files MIDI Tones Master. Next, type MIDI Tones followed by a space and the name of your MIDI file. 
omitting the .midi extension at the end. After the program runs, you'll find the new file, with the name of your old MIDI file, but with a .c extension at the end instead. Open this file with a notepad program and copy the entirety of it. Next, go into your Arduino IDE and open the program we made earlier. Select the lines and span the musical score that was pre-written for us, including the lines that say, play tune, byte, stream for file, blah, 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 whatever. Until this line that says, this score contains a number of bytes, and so on. Hit backspace to erase, and paste in your new code. Save and upload sketch. While you're waiting for it to upload, why not grab a drink? I'm Canadian, so think I'm gonna go get myself a Timmy's coffee with just an absurd amount of sugar and cream. But perhaps a more truly Canadian drink would be name brand light lager, which claims to be beer, but in fact is no more than wheat soaked in water mixed with a little alcohol. And look at that, our program is uploaded. Now we can play whatever music we want, whenever we want, as long as we have a MIDI of it. And that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or if you hate it, please leave a comment. Goodbye. Yo, drinking Easter egg. <sighs> Delicious. Since I don't really want to breathe in all the flux from the solder, it's also time to bust out my homemade fume collector, made from an old frozen, frozen fruit box. God, this is no good. So let's add the bunks, functions, functionality. But perhaps a more truly Canadian drink would be name brand light lager. Fuck. What? Longer do you want me to say I don't know any? <laughs> I'm not gonna stop recording. This is comedic gold. <laughs>